friends and welcome to my channel where today we are talking about the dirt on polydextrose. What is it, why it's bad, and why you should avoid it. Stay tuned! Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited that you are here and I'm really excited to share with you the dirt on polydextrose. I just love teaching people about the truth behind these ingredients, why they're bad, and if we should avoid them. So today's ingredient is polydextrose. That's a big word, sounds fancy, sounds made up. Let's break it down and see what it is. Polydextrose is used in food to sweeten and improve the texture while also adding fiber. That's in essence, that's the whole thing. Sounds good, but again, if you watched my previous video on artificial food preservatives, similar to artificial food sweeteners, which I'll get to next, not always a good thing. Also, I'm just concerned on how a ingredient can add fiber. So let's, let's get into it. Have you ever been eating like a bowl of cereal or some yogurt and on the ingredient list or on the package somewhere it says added fiber? Like how do you add fiber if the only ingredient is yogurt? Yogurt doesn't have fiber. Things like whole grain cereal, oatmeal, those things have a lot of fiber. So that was our first red flag. So this added faux fiber is coming from polydextrose. So the ingredient polydextrose can hide under the name of dietary fiber. And even some warning labels will include will be included if there is more than 15 grams because there is a laxative effect. All right, so it sounds great. We're improving. We're, we are improving the taste and flavor and adding fiber, but let's get into why it's bad. So food companies are starting to hide these bad ingredients under good things like more fiber, added fiber, especially with so many consumers nowadays reading the labels and paying attention to what we're consuming. The food companies are of course trying to get smarter than us by hiding these bad things with good words. So let's see, you can find this ingredient in things like cereal, ice cream, cookies, things like that. Things that don't normally have a lot of fiber in them. Synthetic fiber is not good because it doesn't have the same effects as pure real fiber. And of course there's not many studies to back this up, but can you imagine having three tests? You have your control group, you have your real fiber group, and then you have a group only consuming synthetic fiber. That sounds messy. So there's not a lot of studies that have been done on it as well. Fiber is not a very well understood ingredient in the first place. To start adding in these synthetic fibers, there's just not much information on them. Of course, fiber has a lot of great benefits. It can lower your cholesterol, which is awesome, which is why you prefer to eat a lot of oatmeal because lowering our bad cholesterol is a great thing. So if you're thinking, yeah, I don't want to eat this faux fiber, let me go through my pantry and see what I have going on. Look for ingredients um, with the words polydextrose inulin or maltodextrin. Those will all be faux fibers along with being bad in their own ways, but we're gonna get to that later in another video. So it's really not a great ingredient. It's artificial, it's synthetic, it's modified. You know, it's just not really good for our bodies. Our bodies weren't meant to eat crap, basically. So while it's not a terrible thing, again, if you're eating a mostly raw vegan or plant-based diet, you're naturally not consuming these ingredients. If you find yourself eating a lot of ice cream or cookies or processed foods, and you're noticing this ingredient in it, it's one of those things where moderation. Once in a while you have a cookie, it's okay, but if you have these ingredients in your diet all the time, you may start to feel some negative side effects. Headaches are a very popular one. So if you're feeling kind of crappy, consider taking out these ingredients and see if you just start to feel better. Of course, the most, the most important thing to us is knowledge and information, and we wanna share that with you so you can be an informed consumer and make your own decisions um, and you don't have to avoid it altogether, but we want you to know what to avoid, especially if you're looking to live a healthy and more plant-based life. I'm so excited that you're here. There's more information for you in the blog post in the comments below. Please like and subscribe this video so that I can know that you like it and I can make more videos for you. And I will see you in the next video. Stay awesome.